Lindsay here with another technique using this uh, rubber stamp from Lost Coast Designs. It is a um, white embossed card, then you color over the embossing with Copic markers or permanent markers of any sort, such as Sharpie or Bic or what have you. So I'm going to show you really easily how to do this. So first we're going to start by inking up our stamp with some clear resist, uh, clear embossing ink. Any brand is just fine for that. Just make sure you ink up the stamp well, because sometimes a white embossing powder doesn't want to stick as well as clear. Got a little extra on there, so I just want to wipe that off. All right, so I'm going to press my paper right over my stamp, because the stamp is really big, and I don't have a mount that's big enough, so this is going to keep it working. And then you can see the shiny image there. I'm going to quickly, before my ink dries, seems to be very important. I don't know if it's this white powder that I have, or white powder in general. I'm going to work really quickly to get that covered. I pour the excess back in the tray. This is just a Stampin' Up storage tray that the old style stamps came in. I'm going to cut the lid off so that I could use it for this and then I can just snap the lid back on. All right, now I'm going to heat that and when I come back I'm going to show you how to color it with your markers. Now that's really pretty just the way it is, that beautiful Lost Coast design. And I could just make a card with that because it's lovely, but if I want to add a little extra pizzazz, I can go in with any permanent markers and just go ahead and add some color. And I like to use the chisel end. It just seems to work best for this technique. And I'm just gonna go in, and you don't have to worry about um, going onto the black paper, because it's not gonna show. Once it's dry, it's gonna disappear. So you can just kind of dab it in willy-nilly, and it's gonna look beautiful, which is great. Love those types of projects. Um, yeah, so any permanent, any Sharpie that you have, uh, anything like that. Now I'll offer you a tip when you're doing, um, whenever you're embossing. Um, the first thing, which I didn't do, was you could rub your paper, dust it with a little cornstarch, and that will keep your paper from grabbing any extra powder, which is nice. It'll keep it, it'll just make sure the powder, the powder doesn't stick where it's not supposed to. But another tip is to keep a little ha uh, paintbrush handy, and then if you have like little gobs of embossing powder here and there that you don't want, you can brush it off before you heat it, and then um, it won't become part of the design. So I uh, just want to have a, that's really just a great tip anyway, to have a little paintbrush handy to brush away any stray embossing powder that may have um, been left behind on your, um, on your paper. You can see that, well, this one looks, works already, I guess, but I think that the, the chisel end works better for this technique generally. Little cattails here I want to color in. I want to use two shades of brown on that just to make it look a little more realistic. And I like to add the colors elsewhere. I don't just use a color for one thing. I like to um, bring it in here and there so that it gives color harmony to the piece. I would definitely take more time if I was doing this um, and not shooting a video, but I'm sure you get the idea. And I don't want to make these super long videos that <laughs> you're bored watching, especially for those of you with um, data plans where you can only watch so much. I don't want to be hogging up all your gigabyte whatever's. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I have a, I have just regular internet, I guess, and I got plenty of gigs, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I know some of you watch them on your phones, too, so just trying to be considerate. All right, and those of you that are sneaking a little peek at work so that, you know, you get your crafty fix in while you're, you know, doing your job. I don't want you to get busted, so I'll keep the video short for you. <laughs> And I'm just trying to fill in with this kind of um, sagey color. And I would definitely take more time with this. And I expect you'll probably take more time with this too. Uh, but we just want to get this done. And you can use whatever colors you want. Um, you can use any types of stamps you want. Botanicals are really pretty for this. But really, you know, use what you have. I think I want to break up that purple a little bit. That purple's a bit much. Some of that red in there. And again, I'm just going to dab it here and there just to give it a little bit of color harmony. And maybe just a little of that brown that we used earlier. And this little grass frond. And the cool thing is, the color is going to stay wet for quite a while on this um, embossing powder so I can go back in and I can actually blend it. See if I want to blend it in with that brush tip. And then I can add that color elsewhere and kind of clean off my nib. I can even clean my nib off right on the black paper and you won't even notice it. 
once it's all dry, which is really cool. I love simple projects. And then all that would be left to do would just to be trim this out and put it on a card base. Or you could stamp it twice next to each other and use it as a border on a scrapbook page. So there you go. It's a really, really fun technique and using supplies you probably already have at home. So give it a try. If you have any questions, leave a, co leave a comment. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up on my YouTube channel and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.